and 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 it's and it's a non it's a right so and there's a cycle to it the state is useless people are atomized and then they're reinforcing each other in terms of lack of coordination and action and everything and then and then when you do that i mean i had a discussion recently where it was like the only things that really work in the united states just functionally are the fed and the military i mean these are the kind of prime institutions of government that have you know the Fed knows how to pump trillions into the financial system. And we still have a, I mean, we have an empire. I don't know how functioning it is, but it certainly is everywhere functioning. You know, I just published a book this week called Washington Bullets, which is about the CIA and assassinations and so on. And to write this book, I interviewed tons of ex-CIA people. And I would also like to add that, you know, not because I, I'm, I'm a fan of the CIA, but I know that they actually do function and they work and it's all <laughs> terrible stuff that they do. Nothing that the CIA does is good, but they actually are very functional and, 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 you know, so is the NSA very functional. In fact, they're taping this conversation we're having, sure. they'll analyze it later. They'll decide, you know, since you are talking to me, whether they should downgrade your status as a human being and so on. But, um, you know, these are functional institutions, but what's not functional in the state and, I mean, I'm saying this not with any pleasure, are the good side of history. Um, you know, where is the state when it comes to people, um, you know, suffering from mental illness? So many stories come, Michael, of somebody with schizophrenia in a public place, you know, having an episode and the cop comes and shoots them to death. Yes. So, I mean, I can list one after the other, these stories, you know, what kind of civilization is that where you tolerate the execution of a person with mental illness because the police officer is not trained to deal with them. I'm not even blaming the cop there. You know, I think they just don't have any training. They shouldn't be dealing with that. You need more social workers. You need more public health people. Every street in the United States needs a public health clinic. You know, why should a person wait to see their primary care doctor or if they have insurance, if they don't have insurance, go to an emergency room. Why can't they go to a clinic, public health clinic funded by our taxes where you go in and say, you know, I have a boil. Can you just have a look at it? Oh, the person looks at it and says, that might be skin cancer. I need to, we need, to, instead of waiting for me to develop advanced skin cancer and then, you know, the costs of that here, they look at it and say, you know, we can launch that and the cancer is gone. Wow. Let's do that. Let's have a public health clinic. You don't have those things. So the state has become, in a sense, money, as you said, the Fed, the state has become money and violence. You know, it's become money in the sense of the Fed and taxation, actually, and violence, the police and the military. You don't see the state as compassionate. And that's another reason why this anti-state attitude develops. You know, I, I don't think the state is inherently discompassionate you know state can be a compassionate state i would like that nothing wrong with a nanny state you know they used to make a joke nanny state well the americans don't get nanny because that's an elite british thing elite british people like boris johnson had nannies but nothing wrong with a nanny this mary poppins you know you take the <laughs> medicine with a spoonful of sugar i'd do that i'd wear a mask nanny if it came with sugar which means i can live longer right and maybe if they provided the mask too. At, at the end of my interview uh, with President Lula, he said, he said the job of the presidency, and it's very interesting the, the sort of dynamics here because there's, there's no wokeness with Lula, but there's also none of this other like residual, like patriarchal kind of stuff and nonsense. And, he, and he's sitting there and he's like, you know, he's union guy, no bullshitter, clear communicator. And at the end, he goes, he goes, you know, being a president is like being the mother of a country. And when you're a mother, you have to look out for the weakest kids. And I, I mean, it was perfectly sensible. It was beautiful. He connected it with the anti-poverty program. And I thought the clarity of that expression is completely missing here. And exactly, I think what you're talking about. And the question is, is, I mean, on this point, I think we're in such a state of Certainly people watching this know that and they have a strong sense of it. And I think they feel either the physical threat of the situation we're in or at the very least, even if they're more materially comfortable, I, I think we have to get increasingly real about the psychic distress that you're describing because mm -hmm. it really is just such a disgusting situation. Um, 
what, where are the pressure points? What, what can be done? <laughs> I mean, what I mean, are you thinking <laughs> on? It could be anything, man. It's just, it's got to be a little generative. Yeah. The first thing I would say is I'm very glad you brought up Lula because, um, you know, in the past 20 years, there haven't been many heads of government that have put hunger front and center in their policy. You know, there haven't been many. I mean, it, 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 it costs a lot politically to say that the hungry person is the primary focus of my government. It costs a lot politically. The rich are not interested in the hungry. Let's be frank, okay? So Lula is an extraordinary person. Whatever limitations and, you know, I mean, you hear a lot of criticism on the left of Lula, which I think is really uncharitable and bogus, and I don't He's pay attention great. to it. Lula, He's a terrific that. person. Yeah. And then there are people on the right who say Lula this, Lula that. In fact, what they're afraid of is this is a human being, a genuine human being who ran a government in a sensitive way, putting the hungry people at the forefront. And I really think it's not only admirable, it's very unusual in this in this period. Let's compare them to Donald Trump, compare Lula to Donald Trump and to Joe Biden. It's no comparison. The, the, here's a human being. And these people are basically not human beings, in my opinion. I don't mean not human beings in an un sympathetic. I mean, their humanity to me is in question. Donald Trump, it's striking how much disregard he seems to have for the basic problems of human beings, you know, and I haven't seen Mr. Biden demonstrate a great compassion, you know, apart from some rhetorical flourishes to win over the left. So the United States is in a particular kind of crisis, long term political crisis. One of the Things that I've really enjoyed in this pandemic is I've enjoyed interacting because of these Zoom meetings and so on with the Democratic Socialists of America, with the, um, you know, the PSL, the, the um, Party for Socialism and Liberation, uh, with the old uh, left groups and so on. I've really enjoyed interacting with the young people in these movements. Why, why is that? Because I think they come to politics, Michael, out of a great sense of compassion. They don't come to politics because they think, you know, they're ideological or this or that or whatever. You know, they're not angry. They are compassionate people. I mean, there's a whole generation now that are on the streets saying defund the police from an extraordinarily compassionate place. Now, it's I'm a Marxist and I'm using the word compassion over and over again. And that might sound odd. But I don't believe that you can have a politics, a genuinely liberatory politics, unless you feel for other people. If you don't feel for people, you just you can't enter left politics out of a theory. You know, theories are not enough. You have to actually feel for people suffering for their struggles and you have to enter their struggles in order to change the world. And I, I genuinely feel and I genuinely believe that this generation that's coming up, not only in the United States, but around the world, they are struck by the immensity of the contradictions, the climate contradictions, the pandemic, the disaster of neoliberalism, the impossibility of capitalism. The very fact that you have a system now that says we prefer to burn food than feed the hungry, all this stuff, it distresses an entire generation. Now, others will say it's traumatizing them. I don't think so. I think it's clarifying for them that the path is either, you know, barbarism entirely or something utterly different. And I think they are choosing utterly different. And I'm very proud of these people. I think that they will essentially walk the road to save the world from barbarism. People like Boris Johnson, Bolsonaro, Trump, even Biden, all these people, they just want to take us, you know, ex some of them would accelerate the car to barbarism. Others want to ride the brake to barbarism. They don't have a clue that there's a way to move to a compassionate society. I don't think they have a clue. You know, I, I just don't think they understand that that's possible. But I think these young people, they have seen, look, the world is going to be destroyed by climate change. The world is destroyed by hunger. The world is destroyed by this system that eats people alive. We don't want this shit. We want something better. And I feel that that emotional, that coming from the soul politics is much more hopeful for me than any theory that you'd read in a book. Now, I am, again, I am a person who reads a lot, who writes a lot, who believes in theory. But I want to say that if you don't feel for humanity, it's not worth it. You know, right. it's not worth it. You have to feel and 
and the example you gave of Lula, here is a person, Lula, who feels that feels. the pain of a person is just not tolerable. And I think that's the lesson for today. You got to just say it's just intolerable that people are suffering. No, I, I love that. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.